And this black hole swallows everything else, dominates everything, doesn't swallow all the matter, probably most of it. And then it shrinks away because of it loses mm -hmm. its energy by hawking evaporation. Tun 618 is the biggest known black hole in the universe, which is 66 billion times the sun's mass. But is this the biggest black hole? Finally, British physicist and philosopher Roger Penrose has unveiled the extent to which a black hole can expand, revealing the true scale of black holes. Black holes are some of the most fascinating objects in the universe. Our understanding of these enigmas is limited leaving us with two fundamental queries. How extensive can a black hole grow, and what mysteries lie within its depths? However, recent developments suggest that scientists may have unraveled these mysteries, thanks to the groundbreaking discoveries made by the James Webb Telescope. This remarkable instrument has detected a massive black hole that formed a mere 500 million years after the birth of the universe. Now, let us delve into the intriguing revelations unveiled by the James Webb Telescope regarding black holes and explore the insights provided by Roger Penrose on their size. You see, our galaxy has this four million solar mass black hole, and we are on a collision course with the Andromeda galaxy. And I don't know how long, but many... But some time in the future. Yes, the black holes will probably spiral into each other, and there'll be one big one. There's something eerie about a black hole that suggests emptiness, yet hints at something that could ensnare us. It's a place where time loses its meaning, possessing mind-boggling qualities that our minds struggle to grasp. So what exactly is a black hole? What gives this essentially invisible void such significance and power? The simple answer is gravity. The pull of black holes is governed by gravity. However, there's a more intriguing and detailed answer. Black holes form when the dense cores of dead stars collide. If the mass exceeds about three times that of the sun, gravity overwhelms all other forces, causing the core to collapse and giving birth to a black hole. These objects are incredibly dense, with a gravitational pull so strong that even light gets trapped. Astronomers believe that most spiral and elliptical galaxies harbor black holes at their core. There are three types of black holes. The smallest ones are called stellar mass black holes, weighing between 1 and 100 times the mass of the Sun. They form when the core of a massive star collapses, leading to a supernova or star explosion. On the other end of the spectrum, there are supermassive black holes, which can have masses millions or even billions of times that of the sun. It's believed that these black holes grow to their immense size by merging with other black holes and absorbing stars. Intermediate mass black holes fall between the two categories mentioned earlier. They remain somewhat mysterious, with only a few discovered so far. Each is thought to have a mass ranging from 100 to 100,000 times that of the sun. It's believed that these black holes merge to eventually form the supermassive variety. Black holes not only account for the seemingly chaotic movements of certain stars and contribute to our understanding of galaxies, but they also introduce a new realm of physics for scientists. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, matter warps both time and space, resulting in the phenomenon of gravity. Black holes are incredibly dense concentrations of matter which explains their extraordinary gravitational pull. However, they go beyond that by pushing the boundaries of Einstein's theory. When we examine the singularity of a black hole, things quickly become complex. The forces at play are so immense that scientists don't agree on what happens next. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, when the matter is drawn into a black hole, its information is annihilated. However, quantum mechanics refutes this notion. Consequently, black holes present an extraordinary theoretical playground for astrophysicists and mathematicians seeking to reconcile these two theories. 
Black holes serve as testing grounds for fundamental theories that explain how the universe operates, spanning from general relativity to quantum physics and string theory. There's a common misconception about black holes. They are often envisioned as holes, but that's inaccurate. A black hole can be likened to an incredibly powerful magnet, except instead of attracting metals with magnetism, it exerts extreme gravity that pulls everything towards it. Gravity is what prevents us from effortlessly drifting away into space whenever we jump. Earth's gravity constantly pulls us toward its center, but it ceases once we reach its surface. In contrast, a black hole possesses much stronger gravity than Earth, and it lacks a surface to halt your descent. That's why it feels as if you're being pulled into a hole, giving rise to the name black hole. Most people understand that a black hole forms when a massive star collapses inward, becoming tremendously dense as the entire star's matter is compressed into a much smaller space. Since mass generates gravity, the greater the mass, the stronger the gravity. This means that not only is the Earth attracting you, but you are also attracting the Earth. However, the gravity exerted by your body is much weaker than that of a planet due to the difference in mass or weight. This explains why astronauts appear lighter on the moon, which possesses less mass and consequently a weaker gravitational pull. The compression of a black hole is still mind-boggling. A star with the mass of our sun could collapse into a black hole the size of a small city. That level of density is truly extreme. To put it into perspective, the sun has a diameter of about 1.4 million kilometers, while a small city may span only around 10 kilometers. Imagine compressing the entire Eiffel Tower until it fits within the size of a single grain of rice. That's a considerable reduction. Therefore, referring to them as holes accurately depicts their effect on the surrounding space, but it doesn't truly capture what they are. So, if a black hole isn't a hole, then what is it? Technically, it's a sphere, a volume of space taking the shape of a sphere. Black holes consist of two components, a singularity at the center and a theoretical boundary known as the event horizon. The singularity, located at the center, is a point with virtually infinite density, possessing no volume and attracting everything around it. This is the essence of black holes and the reason behind their unique properties. The singularity is theoretically infinitesimally small and dense. A black hole is surrounded by a boundary called the event horizon. This boundary marks the point of no return, beyond which everything gets pulled towards the center. Although it may appear as a solid border, the event horizon is not a tangible object and contains nothing within it. It's important to note that black holes are not actual physical entities, since they are mostly empty vacuums. The singularity, which holds all the matter, is the only substantial part, while the rest is an empty void that appears black because anything entering it swiftly merges with the singularity. Due to their incredibly strong gravitational force, black holes cannot be directly observed since no light can escape their grasp. Instead of traditional telescopes, scientists employ massive radio telescopes and gravitational wave detectors to study them. In 1915, Albert Einstein proposed the idea that objects moving through space generate waves in the fabric of space-time, which combines the concepts of space and time, similar to ripples on a pond. Researchers at the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, detected gravitational waves for the first time in 2015. This monumental discovery resulted from the collision of two black holes approximately 1.3 billion years ago. We can detect black holes by observing their effects on the surrounding environment, such as their ability to attract gas, dust, and stars, causing them to heat up and emit radiation. This radiation can be detected as heat images. In April 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope, composed of eight ground-based radio telescopes, captured the first-ever image of a black hole and its shadow in the Messier 87 galaxy, located 55 million light-years away from Earth hole, like Sagittarius A asterisk, located at the Milky Way's center, smallest possible configuration known as a Planck star. This theoretical concept stems from loop quantum gravity, which proposes a quantum version of gravity. According to this idea, space and time are quantized, consisting of tiny, discrete units. 
While the universe appears smooth and continuous on larger scales, at the microscopic level, it's composed of these discrete building blocks. The discrete nature of space-time prevents matter from collapsing beyond the Planck length, the smallest possible volume. Anything that falls into a black hole gets compressed into a ball no larger than this microscopic size. Eventually, due to the resistance to further compression, the material undergoes an explosion in a less violent manner, rendering black holes temporary entities. However, due to extreme time, dilation near black holes, billions or even trillions of years may pass from the outside universe's perspective before they reach this stage. Another concept worth exploring is the Gravistar, which seeks to eliminate the singularity without relying on untested theories of quantum gravity. A gravitar is filled with dark energy instead of a singularity, which is a substance permeating space and time, causing the universe to expand. When matter falls onto a gravistar, it cannot penetrate the event horizon due to the presence of dark energy on the inside. Consequently, it remains on the surface. Gravistars exhibit similar behaviors to regular black holes. But recent observations from gravitational wave detectors analyzing merging black holes have potentially refuted the existence of gravistars. These observations provide further evidence against the notion of gravistars. Planck stars and gravistars are fascinating ideas put forward by scientists, but they are not the only explanations for singularities. There is another perspective on black holes that offers a more nuanced and realistic understanding. The conventional notion of a singularity as a single point of infinite density comes from our study of stationary, non-rotating, uncharged black holes. However, real black holes have more intriguing characteristics, especially when they spin. When a black hole rotates, the singularity gets stretched into a ring shape. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, passing through this ring singularity would lead you into a wormhole, emerging from a white hole into a whole new and exciting region of the universe. However, the interiors of rotating black holes are highly unstable, which is connected to the same mathematics that predicts travel to another universe. The rapid rotation generates a powerful centrifugal force that behaves like anti-gravity, pushing instead of pulling, resulting in the formation of an inner horizon within the black hole. Within this region, Radiation from outside the black hole is drawn inward by its intense gravitational pull. However, near the ring singularity, the anti-gravity effect pushes the radiation away, with the inner horizon acting as a critical point. Crossing this inner horizon would expose you to a barrage of infinitely energetic radiation, a condensed history of the universe hitting you in an instant. The formation of an inner horizon also sets the stage for black holes to merge. Yet the existence of rotating black holes in our universe suggests that our mathematical understanding may be incomplete, and something peculiar is happening. Fortunately, the advent of gravitational waves has allowed us to gain insight into the inner workings of black holes. By observing the ripples in space-time caused by black hole collisions, Scientists have detected nearly 100 emerging black holes and have gained a better understanding of these cosmic events. Analysts liken this process to shaking a box and inferring its contents from the sound it produces. In this case, the shaking corresponds to the collision of black holes, while the emitted gravitational waves provide the sound that scientists study. These measurements have been employed in a recent study to refine models of cosmic events enabling us to comprehend the internal structures of black holes and test the validity of Einstein's theory in extreme environments. Previously, scientific models relied on linear interactions, which served their purpose but had limitations as they failed to account for other forms of behavior. However, recent research on nonlinear interactions has improved models by up to 10%, offering a more comprehensive understanding. This progress will not only aid in the detection of more colliding black holes, but also contribute to our preparation for future gravitational wave detection. These advancements will deepen our knowledge of gravity and the extraordinary phenomena occurring in the vast reaches of the cosmos. Due to the pandemic, the LIGO Observatory, responsible for the initial discovery of gravitational waves, 
has been offline since 2020. However, new systems will be activated in the coming years, providing the potential to detect more black holes in greater detail. Black holes continue to baffle scientists. A recent study from the University of Michigan has added another layer of intrigue by proposing that black holes might be holograms. But don't picture holograms like the ones in science fiction movies. Instead, researchers are exploring the connection between the inside and outside of a black hole using holograms. Led by Enrico Rinaldi, the study is based on the concept of holographic duality, which suggests that gravity and particle theories are mathematically equivalent. Gravity theory explains the third dimension, while particle theory describes the second dimension. Both theories play a role in understanding the functioning of black holes. The research aimed to unravel the implications of this holographic duality for black holes and their internal structure. Our understanding of the inside of a black hole relies heavily on gravity theory, which operates in three dimensions. From the outside, space and time flow into and through a black hole. However, the way we calculate the outside differs from how we understand the inside. Despite the inside of a black hole being three-dimensional, the outside appears as a flat surface. Rinaldi's study employs two simulation methods simultaneously to describe the gravity within a black hole. The gravitational pull inside a black hole is so intense that our human eyes cannot directly observe its dynamics. Instead, we must rely on mathematical models. Rinaldi suggests that the best way to conceptualize what happens inside a black hole is through a holographic projection. In this case, a hologram is a two-dimensional image displaying a three-dimensional representation, similar to the holographic Tupac projected onto a two-dimensional surface. Researchers have described a black hole with a three-dimensional center, projected to us through particles calculated in two dimensions. By using quantum matrix models to explore the connection between gravity and particle theories, we can currently only describe the inside of a black hole mathematically. According to the latest calculations, we won't know the full extent of what we observe, whether it's in 2D, 3D, or beyond, until we encounter evidence that challenges our current understanding of the universe's nature. Recently, the James Webb Telescope discovered a supermassive black hole that is 10 times the mass of our sun. What's astonishing is, this is the oldest black hole that has ever been discovered in the universe, at the center of a galaxy just 570 million years after the universe began. Now what Roger Penrose says about the black holes? Roger Penrose made significant contributions to our understanding of black holes and their properties. Penrose's work on black holes earned him the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics, shared with Reinhard Genzel and Andrea Ghez, for their discoveries regarding the existence of black holes and the observation of a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. In collaboration with physicist Stephen Hawking, Penrose developed mathematical models and theorems that provided insight into the nature of black holes. One of Penrose's notable contributions is the development of the singularity theorem, known as the Penrose-Hawking singularity theorem. These theorems, published in the 1960s, demonstrated that under certain conditions, the collapse of massive stars could lead to the formation of singularities within black holes. Penrose also introduced the concept of an event horizon, which is the boundary surrounding a black hole, beyond which no information or light can escape, as we have discussed. This idea is fundamental to our understanding of black holes and their ability to trap everything, including light, within their gravitational pull. Regarding the size of black holes, Roger Penrose suggests that the size of a black hole is typically described by its event horizon, which is determined by its mass. The larger the mass of a black hole, the larger its event horizon will be.